what do future orchards look like has been my um, topic for today. So at Datura Smart Farm, we, our research and innovation is focused around marketable yield, product value, production efficiency. But to do that, we've been focusing on future orchard designs, orchard management practices, which Ian and others have talked about, and post-harvest management practices. We do that through experimental orchards, research on commercial orchards, and using facilities and ag tech. You'll get to see some of those this afternoon. And you'll see some of these today. Um, if, if, if invite you out after lunch to, to the uh, smart farm. There's experimental orchards to answer research questions. We co-investment with industry, etc. So there's, there's work done on pears, stone fruit, agrovoltaics, the sundial orchard, etc. We also um, have higher research degrees, and we've got a couple of those happening at the moment as well. One of those is looking at the sundial orchard, looking at, as Ian alluded to, row direction and the cultivar and, and rootstock interactions and how that affects light, productivity, quality, sunburn, all these things. And Maddie uh, Peavy is, uh, com has commenced her studies on, on that with apples. So why is all this important? Well, we've done 8 billion, we're heading to 9 billion humanoids on the earth. That means we've got to increase food production by another 50% from where we are now. That brings in issues around food security, water security, food waste. Growers have still got to make, make a buck, so the return on investment, they've got to be sustainable economically, financially, social licensed to operate. So at Tatura Smart Farm, we're bringing in the agronomy, the physiology and the ag tech, as I said, around orchard systems and productivity in stone fruit, cone fruit and almonds. Precision horticulture, agriculture, you might have heard about. It's, it's some, some call it the technology for crops, others call it crops for te technology. It's also known as agriculture 4.0. I'd like to highlight too, later in the year, we're, uh, we're hosting the International Symposium on Precision Management of Orchards and Vineyards, but I'll give you another spiel on that later. So according to CSIRO, the major trends are we need to adapt for climate change. We need to be cleaner, leaner and greener. We've got human health, we've got geopolitics, we can't do much about that one. Getting into digital autonomy and the human health and dimension stuff. So horticulture, I'd argue, slots into a lot of those. I've just recently seen in, 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 um, in Germany, they're advertising specials on the supermarket shelf. Greenhouse equivalents, that's CO2 equivalents. But obviously there's some accounting and traceability of things happening here in production, agriculture. So I'd argue it's time to tackle future orchards. We've heard about the rising energy costs, input costs, fertilisers, diesel, the risk of extreme weather. We've just had, we know about COVID. Horticulture obviously does have an appetite for ag tech. There are things out there like dwarfing rootstocks and, and, and things that can help develop and design new future orchards. There's knowledge, improved knowledge around tree training and canopies, pruning systems. And obviously there's always continual structural adjustment at, at, at the regional level. Interestingly, there is an Ag Tech Finder website that hundreds of in, for Australia, services and products. So I don't know if many people have seen that through that info, your information. So there's a website designed for agriculture in terms of how to find companies and systems and products. So here at Tatura, we, we've been using sensors, smart sensors, to help us measure non destructively in the orchard before harvest fruit maturity, fruit sweetness, fruit <coughs> firmness, fruit skin colour. Things that are important to this marketable yield. We've been um, fruit number on the tree, the Green Atlas cartographer, and Nick Fingers brought his machine up as well today. You'll see it this afternoon. There'll the, the be a Rubens technology tent as well in the sundial. So we need to bring in things around traceability, climate adaptation, 
we've heard and we'll see you'll see this afternoon agrovoltaics and ag tech sensors and systems you might or might not have heard about api so that there's work being done here looking at the behind the scenes data exchanging and getting things talking to one another um, and, and, and behind the the, app, the smartphone apps and things Digital twin orchards is another um, exciting area of work where you've basically got a LiDAR scan, a, a digital representation of the, your actual orchard. So we think there's huge potential there with, uh, with uh, spray efficiencies and improved management practices and knowing exactly how things are in the real world in a digital sense and then using that to, to agriculture and improve management. And what I'm going to try and focus on today is, is, is where we're heading with pedestrian orchards, this narrow row orchard systems with a potential new project. And we're planning to do cherry, pear, apple, nectarine and plum. So what's that about? Well, it's all about a fruiting wall. If you can imagine a fruiting wall of foliage and fruit. And that's aiming to improve the light distribution down that profile of that canopy and within that canopy. It's all about improved uniform fruit quality, high yield, high marketable yield. It's, it's, it's changing that ratio of tree height to tree spacing and even canopy width. So it's a new way of, of uh, managing those trees, those orchards. Obviously, there's the need, and we've heard about it from Ian's and others today, we need still have some crops that, that uh, benefit from climate adaptation, things like netting and rain covers for cherries, for example. I'll touch on some of this already. Um, ag tech, artificial intelligence, machine learning, sensors for trees and fruit. We'll also have some of those on display this afternoon. Autonomous vehicles, again, I think there's some tractors there today to observe. In, um, yeah, and, and, and any system that, that helps in, uh, with a un more uniform canopy can potentially be uh, managed uh, with me mechanisation, whether that's pruning and slashing and spraying and robotic harvesting in, in future. The, 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 the new experimental narrow road pedestrian orchard that we plan to plant here is um, obviously going to be a demonstration site for. Um, for stakeholders and growers and students as well, and also as, a, as an ag tech um, demo for, for um, equipment and sensing. It brings in that dimension of, of uh, if everything can be managed at a, at a, from the ground, you, you've got you're removing the need for ladders and platforms, and helps with OHS and worker safety. And then there's the orchard efficiency um, dimension as well. Sweet. So there's a whole heap of reasons you'd want to do this fruiting wall. There's agronomic reasons, there's management reasons, and there's this mechanisation, as they're listed here. Hand, the, the, the economic management reasons, the hand pruning and thinning, everything's uh, ground-based. The agronomic ones I've alluded to are the light distribution and the improved uniformity. And then the mechanisation ones, uh, are listed there as well, the pruning, the thinning, less, less, more efficiency in terms of applications, nutrients or plant growth regulators or et cetera, et cetera. So this is, this is what we're thinking. Uh, as I said, the five crops, pear, apple, nectarine, cherry and plums, narrow row, two metre rows, narrow canopies, 20 centimetre wide canopies. Tree height, two metres. Obviously, you're going to need dwarfing rootstocks. Board on system, adjusted to each crop. Obviously, so some crops, be, the cordon spacing can be closer or further apart. Vertical leaders, netting of where required, rent covers on the cherry, and, and also a potentially a d demo block as you can see, uh, um, it will pick out an apple cultivar. So we're calling it the 2B2B2 two 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 orchard. Two metres high, two metre row spacing, two metre tree spacing. 
So tree density is no higher than any other high density orchard system we've got now. It's just that it's a narrow row and two metres high. No, no ladders as we said. That's our thinking at the moment with cultivars and crops at, at the stage. Um, dwarfing rootstocks are important. And you can get them. But what's the exciting bit, we'd argue, is trying to bring in the next generation and the ag tech and, 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 and using that to uh, demonstrate how we can manage and improve efficient orchard efficiency and productivity. So there's examples of these little autonomous burrow vehicles that can buzz around and take produce off, 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 off the trees to the back to base, whether that's the packing shed. Got monit crop monitoring within the season, you know, the cartographer or, and other sensor systems. You've got potentially robotics if you've got a nice uh, fruiting wall there. Got a, a system that's uh, amenable to mechanical and robotics. We'll have this on display this afternoon at the Sundial Orchard. He, he's, we have a uh, platform harvester. But what we've done is just recently installed a, a smart sensing system on one of those picking arms, one of those, uh, um, uh, yeah, arms where we're looking at sensing fruit as it's harvested and looking at the fruit maturity and the fruit quality. As I said, we ho we've got a, 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 an event later in the year which I'd like to highlight and there's a website there and you can talk to me and others around that. Mm -hmm.